In this video, I'll show you how to make a real estate dashboard using Notion charts. As a real estate investor for the past eight years, I understand how important it is to track key numbers and make decisions based on data. By the end of this video, you'll understand what sort of information you can put on your dashboard, know how to choose the right type of chart, and build your own real estate dashboard from scratch. Plus, you'll learn about a brand new Notion formatting technique that was only enabled in the last week. How do you currently view the information that you store in Notion? Let me know in the comments below. The first step to build our real estate dashboard is to decide what information we want to show. But how do we do this? Well, the other day I spent 15 minutes hunting for a database that I hadn't used for ages and it drove me mad. So I decided to move all of my databases into one place and I gave them much clearer names. So have a think about your business. What sort of information do you store in Notion? What do you want to track? And where is it located? Once you've decided what data to use on your dashboard, go and create a new page and from there link to each of the databases that you're going to use. So here we've got a brand new page, the real estate dashboard, and then I'm just going to use forward slash type link to a linked view of the database. And I'm going to go and put in here the business expenditure. That's the first one and you'll see it load the data. Then let's just go and do the other three. I'll show you how to lay these out properly when we get to the build section, but in the meantime, just go and make a list like this so you've got the data in one place. To make sense of the information in these databases, we need to decide what types of chart to use. And Notion offers us four chart types, a donut chart, line chart, horizontal bar chart, and a vertical bar chart. So before I show you how to create these, when should you use each one? Well, first, the donut chart. This shows you the breakdown of a whole. So no matter what size, of numbers something is for example you just want to see the proportions within that whole so in real estate it could be things like a breakdown of your property expenses it could be what marketing channels your leads come from or how much of your investors funds do they have remaining after they've put money into a couple of projects line charts show us a trend over a continuous scale for example time or money on the x-axis so for example it could be a cash flow summary it could be the spend of cash over a refurb project anything that's got a continuous scale along the x-axis a vertical bar chart is all about grouping information together around similar categories so for example you could go and look at the value of your sourcing pipeline per stage so depending on what whether you're in negotiation or just having a conversation you can go and see at the values you could also go and break down your profitability of your portfolio per property so each of the bars could be a different house or flat for example lastly we've got a horizontal bar chart which is similar to a vertical bar chart but quite often it's used where the labels may be quite difficult to read on a vertical one so because they're horizontal you can go and have longer labels um, but you can use it for similar things uh, as for the vertical bar chart charts are the latest big feature to be released by notion and as you can see they're really powerful but it can be quite tricky to stay on top of the latest releases tips and tricks best practices etc so just before i get on to building the dashboard just go and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell just to make sure you don't miss out on any future videos the final step is to build the real estate dashboard and the first thing that we're going to do is just get a rough layout so we're going to put in a couple of bar charts and they take up quite a lot of room. So I'm just going to make two columns um, at the top. So just type forward slash col2 and on the left hand side it's going to be portfolio performance and in the right hand column, we're going to add pipeline value. And then underneath, I'm going to want to go and add three columns, which are going to be for a couple of donut charts. So you can see here, if I hover and click on the six dots that we've now got a fully horizontal line, whereas here it goes into the two columns. So just make sure that you're here where it's a full line, then here forward slash col three. And then we're going to go and add three more headings. In a second, I'll show you some different ways that you can then go and format these titles. But first, let's just go and add our charts. The first chart that we want to add is the portfolio performance chart. So if you just press forward slash, and then this is going to be a horizontal bar chart. So you can see it there. And we want to go and base this chart off the property performance database. So I'm going to click on that one and it does its thing. So on the X axis, we don't want to count. We want to actually look at the profit for these properties. So if I just go to profit and then sum, we'll click on that one. And you can now see what's the cumulative profit for each of the properties. So 8K all the way up until 16. Uh, group by. So I'm going to click on this one. And we actually want to group it by year. So if I go here to date and then we can group it by year, you'll see that there's now two colors. We've got 2023 20, and 24. So it's still got the cumulative total. 
but it's got two different bar colors for the two different years. On the y-axis, that's fine, it's property. We could sort, so for example, we could go from the lowest to the highest, so which is the most the lowest profitability one to the highest, and then also we've got one which is zero at the top. So I'm just gonna click here, omit zero values. So click that one and that goes and disappears. Now, an actual better way of presenting this is if you go to more style options, we can actually go here, group style, and that's currently stacked. So it's actually putting the two different values, one on top of each other. Whereas if I put not stacked, you can see that we've now got the two years next to each other instead. So I'm going to click off. There we go. And you can see that which ones have improved, which one have stayed the same. You can hover over it and it will show you the actual figures. The next chart to add to our real estate dashboard is the value of our pipeline at each of the different stages. So if I scroll down and show you the database first, we can see here that we've got our marketing channels. And then for each of these, we've got a property value, a property name, and also what's their status. So one of them's brand new, so we've literally just come across it. Some of them we viewed the properties. We've got a couple where we're doing deal analysis all the way up to offer accepted. So we've got all these different values. So it would be useful to know the value at each stage. So let's go and do that. So underneath our pipeline value section, we're again just going to go and put this time a vertical bar chart. So type vertical and we want to go and select the database and the database is going to be the marketing channels. So I'm going to click on that one and on the X axis, we want to show the status, which is the various stages of our pipeline. And we want to go and show it based on status ascending. So this is on the order actually within that field. So these are in the right order. So it's new due diligence, viewing, deal analysis, etc. You can also sort them other ways, but we'll keep it as it is for the minute. We can give our viewer name. So let's say that this is pipeline value. And on the Y axis, we then want to just go and show the actual value. So this is just counting the numbers, but we want to know what the property value is and we want it to be summed. So now we can go and see what the total is for each of the stages. But something that's a little bit even more useful would be to group by the property value. So if I click on that one, it now breaks down the various properties for each of the stages and I can hover. So for example, within deal analysis, we can see here that one property is uh, 100 and the other one's 100. Or here within offer accepted, one's 110 and one's 120. Now, another little tip is that new property are things where we've done no research into it, it's literally just landed on our desk. And so we don't really want that in this view because it may be complete rubbish. So let's go and remove the new property. So if I actually go to filter under here, I can go to status and I can say the status is just in progress. So we're not bothered by offer accepted. We don't want new properties. We just want the ones where it's within our pipeline. And you can see that we've now got a zero figure here. So if I go and save this, let's now go back and we can go to emit zero value. So I'm just gonna tick that one and it gets rid of it. So it's just showing more relevant parts of our pipeline. Understanding which marketing channels are bringing you the most leads is really useful because you can then make decisions to maybe stop marketing in some areas or put more resources into other. And we can really quickly see that in Notion using their donut chart feature. So here, let's go and put forward slash and then donut. And you can see we can add a donut chart and we want to go and grab this information from our marketing channels again. And what we want to go and select is what's the lead source. So whenever a lead comes through, we'll say, where has it come from? So what's the lead source? So I'm gonna click on that one and each slice is gonna represent a count. So all this is doing is just counting up where have each of the leads come from? I mean, it's presenting it in a donut. We can sort, we can go and change the colors, etc. cetera. Um, in terms of styling, we could go and remove the icon in the middle or we could go and add the number back. Uh, we've got the legend. Let's go and add data labels. So we may just want to go and count this. So we could just literally go and say, what's the percentage? So how many in each? Or we could also go and add the name. So here, let's have the name and the percentage. And then if I click off, you can see that we've got three on landlord letters, three on estate agents, and then Facebook ads, not so much. There's just one from there. And it's as easy as that that you can then quickly go and make decision based on how well each of those different marketing channels are performing. Next on our dashboard, let's go and track the spend on one of our refurbs. So here, just forward slash, and this is gonna be a line chart. So let's just put line, there we go. And we want to go and select our 123 Church Street refurb. And this has just got a record of all of our expenditure and the dates. So I'm gonna click on that one and you can see that it's starting to build our line chart. Now along the x-axis, we want to actually use date. So I'm gonna payment date. I'm gonna break this down into actual days. So it's as granular as possible. Um, we want to admit uh, zero values and don't worry about the sorting. But then on the y-axis, we don't wanna just count this. We want to actually have the cost and I want to have the sum. So if there were costs um, on the same day, it would add them together. 
Now, this isn't too bad, so we can see over time how much we've spent per date on each of these different invoices. But what's more useful is to track the cumulative spend over time. And to do that, all we need to do is click here, cumulative. And you can see that over each month, you can see it iterating. So it's a bit steeper at the start. And then as we get nearer to the end of the project, we're not spending quite so much and it starts to level off. We've got a couple of styling options as always. So for example, it's coloring underneath the gradient. So we can turn that off. We've only got one line, so we're not too bothered about the legend. So we could turn that off. Um, we can include data to labels so just have a play around with these just to go and see what the different options are before i show you how to format all of these titles we've got our last chart which is going to be a donut chart on our business expenditure so again we just got a total amount of business expenditure we want to see how that's broken down by the different categories like last time if we just go forward slash and then donut We'll click in here and select our database, which is going to be our business expenditure database. So the data that we want to show here is the expense type and each slice represents the total cost. So let's just go in here and put sum and you can see we've now got the total cost in the middle and it's sorting it by high to low. So we've got a couple of other formatting options. So rather than colorful, perhaps we could just go and select blue uh, and then under styling, we can go and show the value in the center or remove that like last time. We'll keep the legends, the data labels. Let's go and add just the name of them because that could be quite useful uh, and then as I click off you can quickly see that salaries are the biggest so that's 10k out of the 27 all the way down to a lot of the smaller stuff like accounting which is uh, 1k or 3.7 percent so I mentioned earlier that Notion have just released a new way of formatting data that's in your pages so before I show you that just quickly here are the other ways that are still the same as before so for example portfolio performance if you just go and put three hashes in front you can make a bigger name so we could just do that uh, for our pipeline value we could again go and put the three hashes but then just click on these six dots and we can go and change the color. So let's go and say color, let's make that yellow. So that just goes and highlights it a little bit more. Underneath for marketing channels. So this trick is if you go here to the six dots and you go turn into, and then let's just go and put quote, it goes and puts a line at the left-hand side. And we can also go to the six dots and go quote size and pick large. So that goes and just makes it a little bit bigger. And again, like uh, the other headings, we can go color and let's go and make that, for example, blue. For our refurb spend heading, we can actually go and create this using a table. So if I go forward slash and then table, and here we want to delete all of the columns, all of the first columns, so we'll go here and delete. And we actually don't want either of these two rows as well. So I'm just gonna go delete to that one and then delete here. And then in this one cell that's left, let's just go and type refurb spend. And again, we can go make this a bit bigger. So let's go and drag this out. We can go and color it just to make sure that it's a bit more obvious. So let's just go and click on the six dots. We've then got color and let's go and make this pink. Now you can't change the size of this. So it's quite a subtle heading, um, but that's how to use a table to go and make a heading. And then the last one is using a call out block. So this has changed a little bit. So if I just go and make a little bit of room and go forward slash, and then let's go call out here. And you used to have to be able to go and add an icon like this and also some form of heading, but that's changed. Changed. So firstly, we can go and get rid of this. So if I just go remove, we no longer need the icon. And then I can go and make this a bit bigger. So let's make this into our heading three. And I can just go and drag this in to the top. We can also go and do this with our chart. So I'm going to go and drag this underneath. So we've now within this call out block, we've got a really nice background color. We've got a nice heading and the chart, and it's also highlighted. And if you don't like the highlights, we can just go into our six dots, go to color, and we can go default. And then all this does is it's put it into a really nice border, but without the icon and the weird header that you had to do before. So it's a really nice way just to lay out your Notion pages. Now, everything I've told you is useless if you want to create a navigation dashboard. So if that's something that you want to do, then just go and check out the video here.